How is everybody? It's uh, what day is it today? I think it's uh, is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? I don't know anymore. It's Tuesday. Today it's Tuesday. It's the 11th of August, and I am in Kensal Rise, walking down Rentham Avenue at the moment. And the reason I've been in Kensal Rise all morning, it's uh, about three o'clock now, is I've been uh, recording interviews and conversations with local people here for the project that I'm doing for um, Brent London Borough of Culture 2020. But uh, it's a really wonderful project that I started on at the beginning of the year and obviously we had to go on hiatus during the lockdown. But the project's up and alive again. I think my project uh, launches on the 17th of September. You think that's something I should be very clear on at this stage of the game. And the uh, conversations and interviews I was recording will form uh, part of um, an audio trail that you'll be able to come up here to Kensal Rise and have your walk around the area narrated by the voices of local people. You'll be able to hear their voices embedded in the streets. The voices of the streets will come alive. It's been a really uh, wonderful experience and there's more to come. I've got more people to record and we'll add to an audio archive once the project opens. Longer form versions of those interviews will be uh, on the internet and you'll be able to and you'll be able to um, listen to those. It's a fantastic, fantastic kind of social history. It's been a real pleasure to be part of this. When I was up here a couple of weeks ago I actually walked all the way home. I'm not going to do that today because it's the temperature today is in um, well into the 30s, I think it's around the mid 30s, it's really hot and I'm moving into the hottest part of the day. So I'm going to walk east, I don't know where we'll end up, but probably as far as Camden, Chalk Farm Camden. And I want to go up here to a place called um, Tiverton Green and quite a few people mentioned Tiverton Green. Somebody did call it um, Dog Poo Park, <laughs> but it sounds like a really interesting place. I've heard it has a really good view of, uh, of London from here. Let's, let's wait and see. So here we are, Tiverton Green, London Borough of Brent, and this is a, a designated dog park, I think. My, um, my starting point for a project like this is to go to the local borough archives and to look at old maps and some of the first records of the area. And one of the really striking things you get when you look at the maps of uh, particularly Kensal Rise, and Ken that's an interesting question in its own right, is where is Kensal Rise? And actually just, I was interviewing a lady in the shop there, and she was saying, oh, this shop's in Kensal Green. And a customer at the counter who was buying something said, no, this is Kensal Rise. And um, pretty much everyone I ask kind of disagrees, actually. I welcome your thoughts below on that. One of the characteristics of this area, when you look at the old maps, is aside from some development around um, the bottom end of Chamberlain Road and Harrow Road, if you go back to like the 1840s, there was very little in the area. All this land here on this slope rising up to Willesden Green was all farmland, was all fields. Even in the 1860s, a lot of this land around here was open land and fields. In fact, I was in some allotments the other day, talking to some people there, and the upper end of um, the triangle, if you look on a map of uh, Kensal Rise, is this sort of triangular side. The upper side of that, even in the 1930s, 1920s perhaps, was still uh, market gardens and allotments and fields. So it's kind of incredible. I wonder whether Tiverton Green here is a surviving remnant of the open fields of this area. A little slither of the old... Uh, countryside on the on the hills above London and we're only four miles from Marble Arch here so in the 20th century you had working farmland four miles from Marble Arch there's this Trellick Tower down there someone was telling me this morning that from here or possibly the street slightly higher than Tiverton Green, you can see the North Downs. I'm actually going to go a little bit up the hill here because I've been told this bit of high land here 
We've got Bronsbury Park just through there. And that this is uh, known as the Bronsbury Ridge. The Bronsbury Ridge. And just a little bit on the other side of Tiverton Green is the highest point in the old uh, borough and parish of Wilsdon. Actually, I should say in the parish of Wilsdon. I'm not sure if it's the highest point in the old borough of Wilsdon. Of course, there is a distinction. This once would have been the borough of Wilsdon, which was later absorbed into the London Borough of Brent upon its formation in 1965. The Local Government Act was 1963, comes into force in 1965, and all those little boroughs got absorbed into these bigger entities. So it's great to be on the Bronsbury Ridge. It's another one of those kind of topographical features of London, which we don't really recognize very strongly, but they're here beneath our very feet and wow it's so hot 34 degrees so we've moved into uh, nw6 queen's park has become a really sort of trendy shishi neighborhood i'm not entirely sure when that process started as i'm as i'm sure some of you will have already have worked out queen's park the area of london where we are now and the actual queen's park which is just to the south of the Bronsbury Ridge here gives its name to the football club Queen's Park Rangers who actually play over in Shepherd's Bush. However, they did start life over here. In fact, actually, they started life in Kensal Rise. They had a couple of grounds over here where they played and then they moved to Park Royal and they moved around a bit. I interviewed a guy called uh, Richard who's a real expert on the history of uh, Queen's Park Rangers, QPR. That's a really fascinating thing to uncover. There are aerial photographs, actually, of the old athletic ground, which was one of their homes in this area. OK, so we're going to turn right here. I think this street is literally called Bronsbury Park and head towards uh, Paddington Old Cemetery. I wonder where the local manor house was. Could it have been somewhere near Manor House Drive? Man, I've missed my calling as a cryptographer. Definitely Bronsbury Park. By the way, that isn't bad driving. There are roadworks. Walking there past uh, Christchurch Avenue reminded me of another one of the kind of themes of this area. Are oh, its very strong ecclesiastical links. A lot of the land around Kensal Rise and Kensal Green was owned by All Souls College, Oxford. Of course, there's the famous cemetery, Kensal Green Cemetery. Not actually in the London Borough of Brent. It's in the uh, North Kensington, formerly the old London Borough of Paddington, but that was originally called All Souls Cemetery. And I believe I read somewhere that the, the link between the church and this land, well, on these slopes really, even as far as kind of Cricklewood, a lot of the land around Cricklewood is also owned by All Souls. Uh, that link goes back to Athelstan. Bronsbury Park Station on the London Overground Line. Ah, Chevening Road, significant road in the story of the area. You'll have to come up here and listen to the audio trail to find out what happened at the end of Chevening Road on the junction with Chamberlain Road. Let's add a little disclaimer in here, which, is, which should always be in all my videos, is I'm um, the kind of local history stuff. I'm just kind of riffing off the top of my head and going on memory. So if I've made any mist mistakes at this point, don't worry, they will be corrected when I actually create the project properly. And also I've done a couple of walks, fantastic walks and interviews with the, um, the wonderful Wilsdon uh, Local History Society, who obviously are experts on the history of this area and have provided some really brilliant information. That's an interesting domed building there. Like it's a church, I think. Let's go and take a look. Yeah, but it's St Anne's and St Andrews. It's the uh, London Interfaith Centre. So just back up there, Queen's Studios or Queen's Park Studios. That's where I recorded the audiobook of my book, This Other London, which you can get on Amazon. 
<laughs> I'll put a link below, it's an affiliate link and earn a little bit of money from it. This is the main drag in Queen's Park, the main shops. This is interesting, Lonsdale Road. Sort of old, sort of light industrial buildings, looks like stables as well. There's a brewery here. I think this appears to be called Wolfpack Brewery. We are uh, well beyond the geographical scope of, uh, of my project. In fact, we were beyond the geographical kind of boundary of my project right near the start of the video, really. The minute we kind of left um, Tiverton Park, really, we were outside of the zone of operations for that project. This is just a great walk through interesting terrain. And we will learn what we learn as we walk. So we're turning, uh, I think we're turning south into Donaldson Road. And then along Bronsbury Road, heading east. Here we have the Roman Watling Street. This section of it is known to modern humans as Kilburn High Road. I always makes you think of the band, Kilburn and the High Roads. This is not just a Roman road, it's believed that Watling Street, or at least portions of it, go back far, far, far beyond, deep into the mists of time, perhaps even originating as uh, animal tracks. Lots of uh, really interesting old buildings along Kilburn High Road. Miss Heyday is a real shopping centre, but um, I'm actually heading straight across, really, and keep keeping on my uh, eastward direction. Who are these two characters looking down from the corner of West End Lane? I feel like I have to go down West End Lane. It seems to be like a fragment of the old street plan of the area. I'm going to romanticise West End Lane and say it was a fragment of the old Roman street plan and maybe this was a little lane that led on to Watling Street. Look at this old pub here. The bird in hand. It's no, it's no longer with us anymore, is it? When I first started my, for want of a better word, study of London, or my putting together a kind of psychogeography of the city, it was really from doing walks like this today, where I'm just in a place, and then I decide to walk somewhere from there in one direction. And I just wander, without really knowing anything, and just seeing what I can find, and seeing what catches my attention and then going home and and looking it up and learning more and just kind of you know classic if you like psychogeographic drift just drifting through the city it's um it's something i still do quite a lot but i rarely make videos of those just kind of aimless drifts in areas where i don't really know a great deal of, about them i mean here you know i can tell west end lane I'm going through a valley, I've just gone through a valley that's near Watling Street. There's a possibility, a possibility that there is a river running down through there. Uh, it would, in fact, actually, it could be a river that has an association with the Tyburn, I think, and it goes down through um, uh, where Abbey Road Studios is, down through St John's Wood, and I think it may run into the Tyburn. I'll have to look that up when I get home, but certainly has the features of a kind of, of a river valley, doesn't it? We can see the Westbourne flowing across West End Lane in this map from 1790. The Westbourne, or the Kilbourne as it was previously known, rises in Hampstead and flowed across Watling Street through the fields of West London and meets its confluence with the Thames in the grounds of Chelsea Hospital. And Abbott's Place, NW6, clearly has a, has a story to tell. I'm guessing Abbott's Place is associated with Kilburn Priory. Some of the old topography books write about Kilburn Priory. Church, just here. And yep, and here we go. Priory Road. And there we go, we've come to Abbey Road. Abbey Road Studios is uh, a bit further down. I wonder if there's anyone doing their, uh, their photographs on the, cro on, the, on the zebra crossing there. Normally there's an enormous queue zebra photograph taken there. 
<laughs> so I think we'll, uh, we'll carry on along Priory Road, I think. I don't recall ever walking along this part of Priory Road. We're now going round Goldhurst Terrace. And we're turning into Aberdare Gardens. This is the London of the seriously wealthy around here. These are architecturally quite interesting buildings, aren't they? Turning right into Fair Hazel Gardens. Coming into Swiss Cottage now. Always found Swiss Cottage to be a kind of quite a curious community. I've never been out to kind of pin it down. Mind you, that probably says more about me than it does about the area. I find this a really fascinating landscape here. It's Hillsgrove Road. It's quite a steep rise here up to uh, up to the main road. So we need to get across Finchley Road. Got a green man here. There we go. The, the Finchley Road, the A41, is another one of those real mother roads of London. The upper reaches of the Finchley Road, the A41, or the A41T, as Nick Papadimitrio calls it. I think of that as kind of the landscape of my, uh, of my film, The London Perambulator. A lot of the walks we did for that kind of originate along the, uh, the A41. Now going along uh, Adelaide Road. It's a great building over there, isn't it? The library. Continuation of Adelaide Road. Just going to head down Harley Road to Primrose Hill. I haven't been to Primrose Hill for a couple of years, I don't think. Got to earn a few quid to live around here. Wadham Gardens. I wonder if that's got anything to do with the Oxford College. You wouldn't think you're a stone's throw from central London here, would you? So peaceful and quiet. If we just go along Ellsworthy Terrace, we arrive at Primrose Hill. So you can see where we are in relation to central London, because just the other side of Primrose Hill you have Regent's Park, and down here we have the Euston Road. We've got the Ordnance Survey app on my phone and it shows Barrow Hill being down the bottom corner of the park, the Barrow being a burial mound. So we'll go up to the viewpoint and then we'll work our way down to the tumulus. It's interesting, Primrose Hill has had a degree of kind of mysticism attached to it over the years. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it comes from. It was adopted by a kind of a gathering of Welsh bards in the 18th century and certainly at one point Druids used to gather here, but when I say Druids, I mean kind of 18th, 19th century Druids. I guess, it, this is just my conjecture, is that it's because it's a high point, and sometimes the highest point in an area was thought to have been a place of gathering in ancient times. The name of uh, Barrow Hill down there, I can't find anything which definitively states that it was a burial mound. It's just believed that perhaps it was a site of a battle where the dead were then buried in ancient times. It may though have been derived from Greenberry Hill, which then got changed to Barrow Hill. It'll be interesting to see if I can find anything more when I, when I get home and I get in books rather than relying on the internet. But it is the second highest viewpoint in the London borough of Camden. And even if the mysticism is a kind of relatively 
modern invention. You can certainly imagine in, uh, in the ancient times, in, in the Bronze Age, and back further, when the Thames was much wider, this would have been a very prominent location in the landscape. and certainly would have drawn people in from the surrounding district. So this is one of the six protected viewpoints of London. It is really magnificent, isn't it? You can see as far south as the Crystal Palace Tower, our east to Canary Wharf. There's the Shard, very prominent there. This is looking back up to the summit of Primrose Hill. According to the uh, OS app on my phone, that area of trees over there, that's Barrow Hill, which could, could, just possibly, be the site of a burial mound. This stone is obviously symbolic in some sort of way. It's interesting. There's mention of Blake in his inscription on the summit of Primrose Hill. There's a reference to Shakespeare here. There's a Shakespeare oak. This was Henry VIII's hunting grounds. But I can't see anything on my phone, on the internet, about this stone. So now, suddenly, it's this stone which is the most mysterious thing in Primrose Hill, which in my mind, obviously, I'm attaching it to the fact that this area around me here is called Barrow Hill. So this is a perfect place to end this walk, the glorious spot of uh, Primrose Hill. And the batteries run out of my camera, so thanks for coming on this wonderful walk with me today. Thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Look out for more news about my project up at Kensal Rise. And uh, I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.